Hello, Matt here from Air Gun Hub, and as you can see in front of us, we have the Smith & Wesson box. As you've probably seen from the little clip it's before, we're going to be looking at the Smith & Wesson 686, and this is the PPC 1500 model. As you can see, this is a larger box than normal, and that is because it does contain a few extra pieces, or would contain a few extra pieces, which I'll go into in a minute when we open the box. Nice Smith & Wesson logo on the front there. As with all these Imrex pistols, they do have the logo on the front of the box of the gun that's inside the box. And again, as with all Imrex pistols, the only other paraphernalia is the sticker on the side that says um, what the pistol is. So it's Imrex Smith and Wesson 686 in the six inch, and it's a steel finish. So we'll open the box, and there you have it. So the first thing we're greeted with is a lovely instruction manual, full colour instruction manual. Uh, it's in German, the first bit, obviously because these uh, air pistols are from Germany. But, as with all the instruction manuals, it just gives you a rundown of the pistol, how to safely load a CO2, how to load the magazine, how to safely shoot the gun, etc, etc. There is English a bit further along, um, so that's that. Um, first thing is, you do get two spare magazines with this, as well as the third magazine that is in the pistol already. They're not quite like the normal Umarex magazines because obviously they've got to be bigger to accommodate the, the chamber or the barrel of the um, or the cylinder, should I say, of the, the Smith and Wesson 686. They are a 10 shot rotary magazine instead of the normal 8 shot rotary magazine. They do have the teeth in it um, like the other magazines, so they index properly. Um, so basically, they're just a larger version of the 8 shot rotary magazine, really. So put them back. The other thing that you do get in this is a cleaning rod. It does actually look like a proper firearms cleaning rod. It does have like a steel or wire um, brush on the end. It's quite coarse so it will clean it really really well. Um, you do get two extra front sights. If I can show you these. These are actually different thickness front blades. So depending on your preference, you see that one's a little bit thinner. Depending on your preference, whether you like a thick front blade or a thin front blade, um, you can change them out. They're just a single screw in the top that basically unscrews and removes it, and you can change it. You do get a barrel removal tool. This is if you've got um, any other barrel lumps that these come in. This just slots into the end of the barrel, twists out and unlocks the barrel. And talking of barrel lumps, there is actually cutouts on these to accommodate the 8 inch barrel and the 4 inch barrel which is why this box is generally bigger than normal Umarex pistols. There's a cut out there for a tin of pellets if you so wish and also a cut out there for um, CO2s if you wanted to put CO2s. I've left mine in just to keep it nice and neat because I tend not to store pellets and CO2s in my pistol cases. So if you lift this out and move the box out of the way we'll have a look around the pistol. So there you have it. Working at the barrel, as you can see, you've got the Smith & Wesson writing, the Mod 686, which is the pistol it replicates, and a 6 to denote it's a 6 inch barrel. There is an adult gun only bit of writing there, uh, obviously that must have been able, they must have had to put that on for legal reasons, or obviously trying to prevent children or, or teenagers that shouldn't really be shooting unattended with them. Moving around, you do have a unique serial number on these. I'm not sure if the normal 686 and 586 come with a, a unique serial number, but I do know the PPC version does come with a unique serial number. And then you've got the Smith & Wesson logo, uh, laser etched on the side as well to complete this side. Moving around, we have the PPC 1500 uh, laser etched in that side there to denote the PPC version. You also have manufactured under license from Smith & Wesson in Springfield, MA, USA and it's made in Germany, so Smith & Wesson have given Umarex the license to replicate this pistol and there's also a little left there which I believe is for the German market. The only other thing is the calibre on this side, we can get it in, it's not focusing, there you go, Co 177 4.5 pellet and that finishes off all the literature and writing that's on this pistol. So as you can see I'll try and give you the, the steel effect, you can see there it's a nice brush steel effect on this pistol which is the obviously is the PPC is finished in this finish instead of the nickel that the 686 is normally finished in just looks a bit better in my opinion looks nicer looks a lot more harder wearing um, as you can see these are a fixed cylinder unlike other 
revolver pistols out there like the Dan Wesson it is a fixed cylinder so it doesn't move um, there is a, a what would be a cylinder release and that rolls out the the magazine it's got the proper the proper arm as it would but obviously the normal cylinder stays intact and you are left with a magazine that can be slidden off and uh, loaded slotted back in it is a black magazine it would be nice if they finished that in steel as well to match the pistol or in this normal 686 version the nickel version if they finished it in nickel um, but I believe that is because they have to make these uh, magazines and pistols to such tight tolerances that if they did finish it in nickel the extra layer of nickel finishing would have actually interfered with um, the the functionality of the pistol as such or, or so of red and, and that's the reason why these are actually in black and not nickel um, again that's what I've read whether what, what truth's in that I don't know um, there is no safety on this pistol so do be wary I do believe the older versions did have a safety a working safety but this particular model doesn't have a safety so once this has got CO2 in it and the magazine is loaded uh, do make sure that you do, do put these in a, a, fi a point them in a safe lo uh, location um, it is single action and double action so you can just keep pulling the trigger or you can cock it every single time as you'll see when it is cocked if you can cover that up the actual trigger itself does lock back which does give it a lot lot lighter feel these do have a very very light let off one of the lightest out of all the umrex pistols especially in single action um, I believe that's obviously what makes them so accurate it's just a really really light trigger and it feels really really good you can predict it you know when it's gonna let off it does feel really really good the grips are a very very good quality rubber they do feel really really good in the hand they don't feel cheap they don't feel nasty they do feel really nice and rubberized and it does give you a nice firm grip when you're holding on to the, the pistol itself to load a CO2 as you've already seen at the start you just drop the arm down remove the the right hand grip slot your CO2 in wind your wheel up and push that back up again and then you do get a little hiss of CO2 to let you know that it is pierced and sealed like the magazine the triggers black the the trigger and the hammer I'd, and the, obviously the the mag release I don't mind so much it sets off nicely it'd just be nice if this barrel was finished in in nickel to just so it flows all the way through as such the sights are adjustable for windy demand and of elevation so you can adjust them left right up and down um, if I try and show you these they're not too bad they're very small but again because they're adjustable for windows and elevation it does give you a, a nice sight view especially if you can change the blade to something that you like whether it's a thinner one a thicker one um, to whatever your preference is you can get a really really good sight picture with these as you can see there is no white dots or anything like that you could add them I suppose just to give you a better sight picture again again the front blade itself doesn't have any white on it or anything like that there's the screw that you do remove if you want to change your, your front blade to a thicker or thinner one. This has actually got, I think, the thinnest one on it. It just gives me a better sight picture just because the gap in the actual rear sight isn't that big of a notch. So I prefer a smaller one just to so I can see the front blade a bit better. But yeah, there you go. The Smith & Wesson 686 PPC 1500. Now obviously the, the PPC 1500 stands for Practical Pistol Competition. Um, of which 1500 is the highest score you can achieve in that competition. Now what Omerex have done to commemorate that is in the CP88, the 92FS and the 686 they've made these PPC 1500 versions. Um, there is 1500 of each model uh, which is what the 1500 denotes for in this instance not obviously the highest score that you can get in the competition but 1500 copies of each version. Uh, it is said that only 100 of these PPC 1500s came to the UK of each version which makes them pretty hard to come by in relation to normal 586s and 686s. Uh, this was one from my personal collection. It's one that I really, really like, and it's one that will be staying with me. Um, and it, I just think it looks a lot, lot nicer in the, the stainless steel brushed finish over the nickel. Most of my pistols are in nickel, as you already know, but I just think this looks a lot, lot nicer in the brushed steel. So there you have it. I hope you like this video if you can get this video to 20 likes that'd be absolutely amazing if you can give it a like a share 
a subscribe, a thumbs up, that'd be absolutely great. And I'll see you next time.